Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Super Clash Spooky Cast. I'm your host, Trey, joined, as always, by my co-hosts, Connor and David. Say hello, boys. Howdy. Hurdy. All right, it's been a while since we've uh, done a review, um, but we are coming back strong with uh, Guillermo del Toro's latest project, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love these books as a child, um, and I'm Absolutely. super stoked that we now have a movie based on the stories in this book. Mm-hmm. Um, so, that being said, uh, let's start off with our thoughts on it. Uh Connor or David, do you want to go first? Connor, did you ever read the, the books? Yes. Did you ever read all the books? I read the first one. Okay. Years ago, as a kid. You, why don't you go ahead and start then? Okay. Um. So I really liked the original book when I read it as a kid. Um. I was always into horror books. Um, when I was really little, I used to read like every Goosebumps book that I could find at the library. And honestly, horror has always been a huge part of my life. And I will say I had some fairly high hopes going into this movie. Um, I feel like I was let down quite a bit. Um, the reason I say that is I kind of expected this movie to have kind of a wide range of different horror elements and things like that. Um, But what this movie ended up being was about 75% body horror and body horror is my least favorite type of horror. I, I don't, I don't get a whole lot out of the gross out factor and it just doesn't do it for me. I, can see that th- there is a huge audience for body horror, but for me, uh, I- I'm not into it. And when that was what a majority of the movie was, and I was hoping for a little bit more supernatural horror, um, uh, I think most of the scares were just relying on that. There, there weren't a lot of different types of scares. I don't feel like I jumped at all i feel like i winced and cringed a lot because of the gross out scenes and stuff um but that's about as far as it went um what did you guys think as far as the overall scares so um the the first thing i gotta mention um so so the books don't have like a tied together storyline like the books no. are just you know short scary stories that are, mm-hmm. are meant for children really um and yeah and, you know and uh in retrospect of that um i think that they they did a good job uh mm-hmm. with the stories that they did decide to show in there uh like the Me Tai Doty Walker, uh, the Haunted yes. House is one of them, um, mm-hmm. and then uh, the Big Toe. Like I think they did a really good job with that. Like the visuals were great. Uh, you know, I think uh, Del Toro, um, he has a way of doing a lot of uh, very like grotesque and dark sort of um, like costume design and and just setting the tone. Um, which was great. Like there were, you know, the the Herald Scarecrow was fucking creepy. The fucking uh, the fat lady in the asylum mm-hmm. was fucking oh, yeah. creepy. <laughs> like oh, yeah. it, it, it hit those points for me. Um, you know, there was there was some brief character development, um, like just enough to, you know, help the the story for the movie fit together. Um, I feel like the character development was too much. It took way too long to get into anything horror related. I, I feel like without that, though, the the basis for the movie would have kind of fallen apart. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, like like we said earlier, like it's just a bunch of short stories that they kind of put together to have one fluid storyline, which isn't what it was 
meant for. That being said, um, you know, some of the negatives that I, I found was, uh, you know, the cohesion of the story, um, just because, like, you know, it's hard to piece together a story on something that isn't supposed to, like, be one giant story. Um, so I right. there, there were some problems there. Um, another problem that I did have was pacing. Uh, like you said, Connor, uh, it, it, like, the character development could have done been done better and shorter to have gotten or spread it across the movie right. yeah like instead it of just, dumping it all at once yeah but um yeah those those are my thoughts i i enjoyed the movie um i liked it so uh david what are your thoughts on it um i would say that i actually ended up enjoying the movie with the exception of a few things, um, again, I read actually all of the uh, all the books as a kid, and also all the Goosebumps books as a kid. Uh, um, that's actually probably what got me into horror in the first place, and why I'm still into it. But anyway, getting into the movie, um, my initial want to see this came from seeing Del Toro's name on it. And I actually forgot, like when we were watching the movie, that Del Toro was part of it. And that's why I was like at the end credits, I'm like, oh, Del Toro was involved in this. Oh yeah, that's why I wanted to come see it. But um, when I when I heard that they were doing a scary stories to tell in the um, to tell in the dark movie, I was like, okay, they're either gonna try to do their own thing, which is gonna suck, or they're gonna go based off the books, and it's gonna be awesome. And so I'm kind of in between because personally, as far as the character development goes, I didn't really care about it all that much. I just wanted to see the scary stories be brought to life in the dark, and um, you know, the the prison scene one was great um i love the whole haunted mansion thing um the fat lady in the hallway just still gives me the creeps <laughs> i was actually a hope i was actually hoping that they, i was actually hoping that they wouldn't zoom in on her and what did they do they zoomed way in on her <laughs> i was like i was like oh god i was like don't get too close don't get too, too close and you just see this thing smiling i'm like uh no uh and then they just like the thing ended up hugging the kid so that kind of ruined it for me, but in a good way. But um, as far as the story development goes, I literally just wanted to see the scary stories. I didn't have a whole lot of attachment to the kids that were involved, except for the kid that, uh, what, what was he said? You broke my banana or uh, something like that. Hey, hey, my banana. <laughs> but everybody closed the door. I, uh, yeah, I honestly thought that was the funniest part of the whole movie was, hey, you broke my banana or some, whatever it was he said. Um, I actually kind of felt like uh, kind of attached to that kid because he kept kind of doing like jokes every once in a while. But um, the whole um, everyone disappearing in town and it was all being you know written in the books. I'm thinking to myself, and you know, ag again, it's going to be based on these kids that are going to be doing everything themselves. They can't go to law enforcement because law enforcement won't believe them. Guess what? Law enforcement didn't believe them until this shit falls literally out of a I, chimney and he goes well, what the shit so i gotta say that uh that, that scene was probably my favorite um mainly because like me ty Doty walker was one of my favorite stories in that book and to see that mm -hmm. come to life um granted there was like a different spin on it like in the in the short story the the dog dies when the head rolls down the chimney mm -hmm. um but in this uh in the movie it runs away which is understandable because it's like a children's fucking movie kind of um, yeah, that was that was actually one thing that I was kind of surprised of is that they actually showed the death of the kid in the scarecrow scene. Right. Yeah. And they actually showed like the pitchfork going through him. I was like, wow, they're showing that in a PG thirteen movie. Well, actually, like, it was well, ex there wasn't, wasn't there expecting wasn't that to see or anything. And like they they showed true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they showed um, him like killing the fucking sheriff or whoever the chief. Snap like, the yeah. That was the most neck. gruesome kill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was. Here's the thing, I did, uh, the Mitai Doty Walker thing is, so we're to believe that all the stories were written by this now deceased girl, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I was under the impression that the girl made up all of these stories. It was like her imagination and she came up with these stories as a coping mechanism, correct? Yeah. She came up with the stories to tell the kids that came to see her. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. 
how in the hell did these kids already know these stories then? If they were written in this book by this now deceased girl, and the girl would have only had the book and would have only told the stories to the kids that then died. Uh, well, the, uh, mm-hmm. the the reason the kids died wasn't because of the stories. The kids died oh, because of the pollution to the water. Oh, I know, so, but they died. I'm not saying that's, you know. <clears throat> right, but that's the, that's not to say that they didn't pass along those stories beforehand. Like, it doesn't say that they immediately died, you know, right when like, after she told them the stories. Like, they just happened to die afterwards, like shortly afterwards. Because of the, yeah. it the water. a little bit, and I think it's it like their way of kind of shoehorning in that particular story <laughs> was like, oh yeah, I knew that one as a kid, so that's what's gonna happen, and like it's like okay, and plus he was an out of towner, like he wasn't from there, he was passing through town, is what they made it look like. Yeah, that so, was one. Of, that was one of the characters that I actually was not attached to at all. Like, I mean, they made him out to be a badass that carries around a switchblade and a lighter. Yet he's a draft dodger, so I'm trying to figure out what the hell his background actually is. Well, I mean, he, I, I his brother got a... sent to Vietnam and was killed, and that's probably why he, you know, right. I think he's gone gone to like the rebel state of life. I yeah. My 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 whole thing, uh, like I said before, is you know there there are going to be plot holes and there are going to be things that don't always add up just because. This is a <laughs> like a story that has been fabricated to fit all these other short stories from the book. Yeah. So I think going into it with that mindset, the expectation um, is a little lower uh, as far as like a cohesive story goes. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it is definitely something that we we can uh, critique and uh have critiqued so you know i'm I, i'm not trying to pick on it too much there were some things i liked about the movie i feel like i didn't give it enough uh you know compliments on the things it did right um i thought the scene where he's in the hallway and there's the creepy faced woman walking towards him i thought that was done really well it was really creepy i enjoyed that one um when <clears throat> he well, there, there's uh, in the toe section of the movie when he's like trying to get away from this like zombie looking girl and stuff. That was kind of creepy. Um, <laughs> I kind of predicted she was going to be under the bed with him, though. So I, I was like, yeah, just that was kind of a huge lead up that was yank you under the bed, whatever. Um, but I thought a lot of the actors seemed like they were having a great time with their characters and they fit perfectly i don't feel like any character seemed out of place you had kind of the um the nerdy kind of stick in the mud character you had the really hamming it up goofy character i i liked him a lot yeah um you had the out of towner who was kind of mysterious and then you had like the uh like horror bookworm girl uh who ends up you know writing the true story of what happened to the the little girl in the basement um I think the one last piece of critique I could even give it that kind of like it felt very ham fisted was the way they set it up for a sequel. I I just felt like it was like way too heavy handed. Like, yep, we're definitely doing a sequel. It was no, not even like a little ambiguous. It wasn't like a post credit scene. It was like part of the movie. Like, all right, now we're going to go get these people back. And it's like, uh, it doesn't really fit the tone. I, yeah, I think it would have been better to have just ended the story with like those kids are dead. Like, yeah, sorry, they're absolutely. Fucking dead. <laughs> yeah, and I liked them too. But if they, you know, make us feel like there was consequences to this movie, you know what I mean? Right. And I, uh, think, I, don't know. I think that's just you know the the adult in us. Um, you know, obviously, like if you think about it uh, from the perspective. Uh, of it being a children's book turned into a movie, um, they want to at least try to have some semblance of a happy ending. Um, yeah. Even though in the books, uh, it, it never did. 
No, 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 of course not. But I think it was a good entry to horror for a lot of people that probably yeah. either don't like it or for kids that, you know, want to go see a horror movie, but they don't want to immediately be thrust into, you know, like the Saw series, which is just absolute hardcore right. body yeah, ripping and shit. Yeah. But um, I would say that for me overall, as far as the, bringing the stories to life and as far as, you know... I don't really think that there was a better way that Del Toro could have put this together, seeing as how Trey, like you said, this is all a bunch of short stories put together. So, because I mean, it's the same thing with Goosebumps. It was all a bunch of stor- short stories that they put together as as the movie as a whole. With with just thinking about the horror part of it, I'd say it's probably about a seven or eight for me. Probably a solid eight. Whereas for the stories for the kids and you know that huge, obvious, you know red flag in your face hey there's gonna be a sequel so yeah come come watch the next one um that part kind of brings it down for me which is about to a a four or so but overall i'd recommend it to anyone that uh that either liked the books or wants to get started in horror so your overall rating was a seven then is what you're saying yeah my overall rating for the for for the horror part was about a seven yeah all right so uh we've we've critiqued it um we we've given our thoughts um, let's go ahead and give it a rating out of let's let's do ten. So a rating out of ten. Okay. Uh, David, I'll give his. So David, you're going with a seven out of ten. I'll go with a seven out of ten. Yeah. Okay, Connor, what's what's your rating? Honestly, before he even said it, I was thinking a seven out of ten, just because though I don't like it because it was mostly body horror. I want to be fair and to be you know impartial, and I think. What they did, they did well. It just wasn't what I wanted. So I'd say a seven. I think the horror was good. The acting was pretty good. Um, it just wasn't kind of horror. Hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I would give it... Uh, I'm probably going to give it a solid eight. Um, just because, uh, you know, it, it does hit a, a strong chord with me as a child. Um, you know, Still a child. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like I would say that that scary stories to tell in the dark is probably what got me into horror to begin with, and like I'm a huge fan of horror. Like Connor knows, like that that's been our biggest pastime is just like watching. We used to shitty rent horror shitty horror, horror movies, movies <laughs> every Friday night in high school. Oh wow! And, and like you know, it's it's still like a big Stacks. thing for me. Like I, I'm <laughs> always looking for like the next great horror film or even shitty horror film like anything that i can like take and find value whether it be like you know funny or like puts me on the edge of my seat um you know this movie had a couple of moments uh i wouldn't say it put me on the edge of my seat but like it was it was intense mm-hmm. um and uh so yeah i think that uh you know see, seeing uh the book come to life um is kind of a big deal for me uh, so I would give it an eight out of ten. Uh, the acting was pretty good for what it was. Um, the visuals were above and beyond the best part about this movie. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so it, I would say go see it in theaters if you get a chance. You know, spend that money. Um, but at the very least, definitely just see it at some point, whether you go to a theater or watch it. So yeah, we had a we had a miraculously good time in the theater this time. Yeah, yeah I was, was shocked. There, there was, was an infant. <laughs> yeah, there was an infant. Um, it it was uh, it acted up a little bit during the beginning of the film, but then it calmed down. Um, there was like this weird instance again, which we seem to always have this problem at the uh, the theater that we go to, where like 15 minutes before the end of the movie, these people come in with like their whole family, and, and it we, seems yeah. like the same family. I it's too much of a coincidence. Family. It seems mm-hmm. like too much of a, Okay, so it's it's a it's a Hispanic couple and then there's another woman and then there's an, a a baby that's in a carrier. And that is how it was the last time too. Hmm. So I don't know if it was exactly like that, but Yeah, the the last time it was like this, really this time this time they're actually fucking... carrying a kid in their hands. Yeah, the, the last way. time was it. It really took away from the experience, whereas this one didn't take away from it as much. Uh, they didn't make yeah, they didn't as much say noise. anything. Um, yeah. They just kind of sat down and. I don't know what you're getting from 15, 15 minutes, minutes of a movie, but 
who knows. Yeah, exactly. But surprisingly good experience overall, though, as far as like quietness in the theater when we're waiting for something to happen. Like, I don't think I think I actually heard the air conditioner while we were waiting on us to care. I was worried about those people next to you, David, that were I was uh, I was uh, teenagers, this guy and a girl at one point. Yeah. Yeah. Try to take your seat. I stopped them. You're welcome. That's all right. (laughs) Hey, and Max made me feel better because after I spilled my popcorn, she spilled hers (laughs) all over her lap. (laughs) You shared a bonding moment. I see. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Y'all looked a fucking mess. man. Fuck. It ain't my job, man. It's my job to have fun. Yeah, yeah, man. Man. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about him and the fucking other people that were there. Oh, oh like, yeah, it, yeah, like, yeah. Like walking out of that fucking aisle was like walking through a war zone with like popcorn <laughs> and fucking candy. Right? You're the reason that the people that work at the movie theater hate the customer. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're the reason. <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're the type of person in the service industry we'd call a douchebag. <laughs> What are they gonna do? Individually, individually pick up every piece. Like I spilled hat. Or equivalent of somebody who goes to the shoe department at Kohl's and like leaves all the paper everywhere if you try on a pair of shoes. Yet I happened to be the guy that worked in shoes and threw all the shit away because everyone left all their shit later. (laughs) And I was like, go pass it on to the next guy. (laughs) Yes, it does. Hey, they're gonna treat me like shit. I'm gonna treat. One other person like shit. Ah, that's a okay, bad, it's that's karma. A bad way to live your life. <laughs> except, except, Karma's except, I don't do that. Me, hey, it was an accident that I spilled the popcorn. I wasn't gonna sift, uh, sit there and go through like the first half hour of the movie looking for every individual kernel because I spilled quite a bit. So it was. Well, it was an opportunity. Connor for a little. <laughs> yeah, bit, you like, were throwing shot. I threw like two at Connor, and that was it. Oh shit. Not like I dumped the whole thing on his head because that would have been a huge waste. But I only threw a couple of Connors, so I don't feel terrible about it. Uh-huh. It was on the floor anyway. I just picked it up and rethrew it. Uh-huh. I didn't pick it up out of the bin or anything. So anyway. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. All that out of the way. <laughs> um, overall, good movie, decent movie. Uh, I think we'd all recommend yeah. people go see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Any, Even uh, if you just have to rent it for a dollar or something at yeah, Redbox, yeah, like, it'd be worth it. It's 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 definitely a movie that you should add to your viewing collection, for sure. Um, don't, but don't take our word for it. Go see it. Yeah, go see it. Go fucking watch. Hey. The, go watch the movie. Like, look, guys. Just because we give it a review, you know, but make make your own opinions. You know, go out, go see it. Like every every movie that we've done has had um like some pretty decent critiques in it i think um but that doesn't mean they're bad movies except for like pet cemetery (laughs) probably shouldn't go see pet cemetery but uh other than that um like this is a good movie you should go see it uh any other final thoughts guys nope No? no i'm good well uh in that case uh thank you all for watching um please like and subscribe Uh, We'd really appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. See ya. Adios.